Hello everyone, welcome back. We had a good uh, break, extended break. Okay, right, uh, let's get started from where we left off. Uh, we'll move into the next session. Uh, section. Um, what are some of the lessons um, that we can learn from uh, David's worship team and uh, as to how he went about uh, you know, setting, setting it up? Yep, um, let's go to First Chronicles 25. First Chronicles chapter 25. Okay. First uh, Chronicles chapter 25, verse 1 onwards, it says, David together with the commanders of the army set apart some of the sons of Asaph, Heman, and Jeruthun for the ministry of prophesying, accompanied by harps, lyres, and cymbals. Let's pause there, okay? Uh, the first thing that we see there is David together with the commanders of the army, okay, uh, When's the last time you see a military army putting together a worship team? <laughs> uh, but yeah, David is doing it, okay? With commanders of the army. First thing, he set apart. Okay, um, set apart. Uh, that is the root word for holy. Okay, um, it's the very root word is from, that's where we uh, get the word, uh, holy in in the hebrew root word simply means set apart be cut aside uh right and so we as uh people in worship ministry we are called to be set apart uh to have nothing to do uh with the world so to speak right but for us to understand uh, what it is to be set apart uh, we need to understand the one who is uh, set apart and that is uh, our God, right? Um, our Father. He is holy. There is no one like Him, right? And we can read tons of scriptures just for us to understand, uh, you know, ab about the holiness of God. Only when we understand and get a glimpse and a revelation of His holiness, uh, we will understand the importance of the calling uh, of why we are called to be set apart, um, right? Can okay, we just uh, go a little deeper in that? Um, Psalm 22, verse 3, it, it says, uh, but you are holy, enthroned in the praises of Israel. Uh, Exodus chapter 15, verse 11. Exodus chapter 15, verse 11. It says, who among the God is like you, Lord? Who is like you, majestic in holiness, awesome in glory, working wonders? Right. Uh, Job 15, verse 15. Job 15, verse 15. Right. If God places no trust in His holy ones, if even the heavens are not pure in His eyes, okay. Um, then Job twenty-five, Job twenty-five, verse five. If even the moon is not bright and the stars are not pure in His eyes, um, is all of this is to say that He alone is holy. That means there is no one like Him. That is the ultimate uh, statement when we say that God is holy. It simply means that there is no one like our God. Right? Uh, talk to me. Are you with me? Yes. Okay. Uh, just some of the quotes. Uh, okay. Uh, 
Uh, this is a lovely quote by uh, Sam Storms. Uh, he says, the holiness of God only secondarily refers to his moral purity, his righteousness of character. Now, when we talk to each other about holiness, right, uh, the first thing that would come to our mind uh, is uh, righteousness or sinlessness or moral purity, right? I will not lie, I will not cheat, I will not steal, uh, you know, all those things. Uh, that is our understanding of holiness uh, is actually righteousness or moral purity that I will live my life uh, you know without any sexual immorality or any immorality for that matter uh, moral purity is a mere understanding of what holiness is and that's what Sam Storms is saying so the holiness of God only secondarily refers to his moral purity his righteousness of character it primarily points to his infinite otherness to say that god is holy is to say that he is transcendently separate set apart holiness is not one attribute among many it is not like grace or power or knowledge or wrath everything about god is holy each attribute partakes of his divine holiness right uh, this is so beautifully put uh, as, as a side note um pastor ashish has a sermon series he's done it like five years ago i think on the holiness of god it's a three-part series i would encourage you to listen to it it's awesome and also uh you can read this book uh by ashish prowl he's the author um his book called The Holiness of God. Um, it's brilliant. Okay. Uh, another quote. Uh, by, this is by Charles Spurgeon. It says, In holiness, God is more clearly seen than anything else. Um, phone quotes, guys. I hope you don't mind. I just hang in there, okay? Because uh, I... I really like all of these quotes. Because God's holiness means he is separate from sin. But holiness in God also means wholeness. God's holiness is his Godness. It is his being God and all that it means from him to be God. To meet God in his holiness, therefore, it is to be altogether overwhelmed by the discovery that he is God and not man. I mean, how do these guys write so well? <laughs> uh, no, this is the last quote, by the way. Okay. It's by uh, Jerry Bridges. Uh, he also has another book. Uh, I think it's called The Pursuit of Holiness. If I'm not sure, I read it long back. I forget the title of it. So, Holiness. Uh, you should uh, check that out as well. Uh, he says, um, holiness is the perfection of all God's other attributes. His power is holy power. His mercy is holy mercy. His wisdom is holy wisdom. It is his holiness more than any other attribute that makes him worthy of our praise. It is his holiness more than any other attribute that makes him worthy of our praise right isn't that awesome uh, our god is holy guys uh, it's it, it talking about his holiness is like it, <laughs> i'm scared to even draw a comparison or give an example is okay you take a diamond okay you take a piece of diamond and you lift it up to the light uh, and you can see the different lights that will fill a room isn't it? Uh, and that's it's still a man-made thing. It's it's still a thing. It's still uh, an earthly, perishable thing. Uh, and think about his holiness. Uh, let's just go to Psalm eighty-nine. Um, Psalm eighty-nine, with me, if you will, please.
Okay. Um, Psalm 89, verse 5 onwards. Okay, if you're there, just give me a yes, um, just so I'm not rushing. Okay, all right. Psalm 89, verse 5, it says, The heavens praise your wonders, O Lord. Your faithfulness to in the assembly of the holy ones. For who in the skies above can compare with the Lord? Who is like the Lord among the heavenly beings? Listen to that line. Right? Who in the skies above can compare with the Lord? Who is like the Lord among the heavenly beings? beings that means the angels and the seraphs and the cherubims and the seraphims the living creatures in revelation 4 that we read in the council of the holy ones god is greatly feared he is more awesome than all who surround him by the way the root word for awesome uh, we use awesome for everything right? oh man that place is awesome this thing is awesome the root meaning of awesome simply means terror, terrifying, you know. Uh, he is more awesome than all who surround him. O oh Lord God Almighty, who is like you? You are mighty, O oh Lord, and your faithfulness surrounds you. And who is like you is a rhetorical question. So it's been asked, mentioned so many times in the scripture. Who is like you, O Lord, in the heavens on the earth? The answer simply being, there is no one like him. He stands alone as God, all by himself. He is holy. Right? Um, can is it? Is, does anyone have a, a another language, uh, say Tamil or Kannada or anyone from? any other language from Africa and just read those scriptures. Hindi also is fine, um, if possible. I just thought it'd be nice. Psalm 89, verse um, 5 to 8. Yes, please go ahead, Ami. Yeah, I think you're on mute if you're reading it. Yes, yes, Pastor. Bhajan Sahita, 89, verse 5 to? Uh, 8. 8. Hey, Yahuwah, Swarg me tere adbut kaam ki aur pavitro ki sabha me teri sachai ki prashansa hogi kyaunki akash mandal me Yahuwah ke tulya kaun thairega? Balwanto ke putro me se kaun hai jiske saath Yahuwah ki upma di jayegi? परमेश्वर पवित्र लोगों की गोष्ठी में अनंत अत्यंत प्रतिष्ठा के योग्य और अपने चारों ओर सब रहने वालों से अधिक भय योग्य है हे सेनाओं के परमेश्वर यहुआ हे यह तेरे तुल्य कौन सामर्थ्य है तेरी सच्चाई तो तेरे चारों ओर है आमीन थैंक्स कपनी या सो इट प्रीटी मच इज व्हाट द इंग्लिश ट्रांसलेशन इज सेइंग राइट इट्स but I like the choice of words. Uh, any other interesting choice of words there that you felt that stood out apart from English? Uh, are you speaking? I think you're still on mute. Avni, you can uh, hear me, right? Really? Yes, Pastor, we can hear you. Okay, no, I was asking, so is uh, was there any other cho interesting choice of words in the Hindi version besides uh, besides the one that's mentioned in the English translation? Pastor, uh, sorry, uh, you, you mean to say any other language? Uh, no, I was asking, so from the Hindi version that you just read, a Hindi yes. translation. Um, so is there any other like interesting choice of words that is that kind of stood out to you, um, like what okay. we read from the English? Uh... 
Uh, I think uh, we the word Yahuwah that comes, it's a Hebrew word Yahweh, which is uh, right. in Hindi it's called Yahuwah. So right. they have uh, used that word to explain the grandeur of his name, of his presence and Right, right, okay. Those who understand Hindi, <laughs> you know, cool, cool, cool. Yeah, yeah thanks, Avni. Yeah. yeah. Uh, any other language, guys? Uh, Canada, anybody? Or Tamil? Can I read in Malayalam? Sure, Sri Kumar. Yes. Yeah, thank you. Yohove Swargam Ninde Atpudangalim Vishuthi Vishuthan Marade Sapil. Nin Ninere Vicious Dream Studikino, Sorgatil Yehovi or the Sadrishan Avenari, Deva Butran Maril, Yehovi Kitulinar, Devam Vishutan Marda Sankatil, Etum Hangarinum, Avenera Chitumula, Elavarkum Mide, Pai Paduan, Yoginim Adano. That's all. Thanks, Shikumar. Yeah, just one more language, guys. One more. Anybody from. Uh... Africa. Okay. Uh, great. Yeah. So um, it's so important for us uh, to understand the holiness of God, to have a revelation of His holiness, uh, for us to understand the weight of the calling uh, to be set apart. Because um, that's what uh, David is, uh, he, that's the first thing that he does, right? He's set apart. That means the Levites, the people that were set apart, they were set apart for the ministry unto the Lord, right? Uh, in the notes, if you see, uh, that, that was a caution that was constantly given to the Israelites, is that, hey, don't compromise with the Canaanites, right? Uh, when you when you get into the promised land, uh, don't compromise your ways of worship with their ways of worship, uh, with with your way of living to their ways of living. Uh, don't compromise uh, to their immoral lifestyle. Uh, but that's what uh, it's challenging us uh, nowadays, isn't it? From all age groups is. Um, what do I say? It's it's like we have this uh, chalta hai attitude. Ah, chalta hai. It's okay. Just this. It's no problem. Uh, it's just one time. It's just. It's just a small thing. It's just a small, whatever, whatever, right? Uh, compromise. Uh, compromising with the ways of God, with the Word of God, uh, to the ways of the world will kill uh, our spirit for more uh, of Him. Um, right? It will. It will not make us want more of God because we've compromised uh, right uh, he says in James is like don't have anything to do with the world uh, you know you're living in it but don't, you're not off it be mindful of it right John 15 19 says you do not belong to the world but I have chosen you out of this world he I have chosen you out of this world he's called me out right he's called you out he's set you apart uh, and I've mentioned this so many times, and uh, forgive me if I'm saying this again, the theme from Genesis to Revelation, um, the heart of God is that I will be your God, you will be my people. Right? I have set you apart. I will be your God, you will be my people. Exodus 19, uh, right? it says, um, you yourself saw how I brought you out of uh, Egypt in, on eagle's wings. Uh, out of all the nations of the earth, although the whole world uh, is mine, I have chosen you to be my treasured possession, a royal priesthood, a holy nation. Right? That's his heart. That is like I will have. I want you for myself. I am not willing to share you with anybody else because that is how much I love you. Right? Because God is so zealously in love with us that he wants us only for him he's a ze jealous lover so to speak right so to say that he does not want to share you with the world he wants all of you all of you only for himself and it's, it's such a beautiful image isn't it uh and so in our journey as worshipers it is a let it be a constant reminder is that our god is holy and we are called to be holy, right? Um, we see that have, uh, 
mentioned being mentioned again in first peter or second peter uh, that we are we, we are set apart we are now a royal priesthood we are each one of us are priests just like how uh, the priests ministered unto the lord in the tabernacle of moses and in this tabernacle we are to minister unto him um, right so that's the first thing set apart and the second thing we see is they were set apart for this, some of the sons of Asaph, Heman, and Jeruthun for the ministry of prophesying. Okay, ministry of prophesying. So very simply, uh, we are we are learning about worship ministry, and we've learned uh, quite deeply about worship from the first year and 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 here a little bit. The root meaning for ministry simply means a cup bearer, a server, a waiter, right? Um, and so, when you when you take worship and put ministry to it, it's all about just bringing these two things: uh, serving and with a with a heart of worship, and and just serving. Before serving our God and serving His people, and that's simply what worship ministry is, um, right? In John chapter thirteen, uh, we see that Jesus stooping down um, to wash the feet of His disciples, right? Um, just the previous section, we see uh, how you know how God is holy, He's magnificent, uh, He's set apart. There is no one like Him. In His holiness, He is humble. Right, they're like the two sides of the same coin. Uh, the holiness and his humility. Um, in his humility, he stooped down, right? Second Samuel, uh, you can check it out, Samuel 22, 36, the second part of it, it says, he stooped down to make me great. Uh, I think it's also in Psalm 18, verse 56 or something, I'm not sure, uh, but, he stooped down in his holiness, leaving leaving all his glory, as we read in Philippians chapter two. Right, he left the glory of heaven and walked down, and he stooped down to make me great. And that's what ministry is all about. Is uh, and which is related to the next point, a uh, submission uh, in the notes. Uh, so they were set apart for the ministry. That means to serve. Okay. Um, I know it's been mentioned out there quite many times, but then we have to be very careful as ministers uh, not to feel entitled um, and not get, not let the any titles or positions or whatnot uh, get to our head and saying, okay, you know, um, or become over familiar uh, because fam over familiarity or familiarity even is uh, is quite. It's the danger zone, right? Uh, in ministry, is as soon as you become, as soon as you think you become familiar uh, with God, uh, you're kind of losing track. And so, always leaning on His heart, uh, leaning to see what He's, what He has to say. Uh, that all of that is a posture of humility, right? So, uh, in humbleness, uh, we in humility we go before Him in, in every season of life, in every stage at every age and uh, in ministry we can we constantly need to uh, lean on him on his understanding um to serve him and to serve his people better um and then we see all the sons of asaph i'm not going to read their names <laughs> okay let's just read their names for the sons of asaph zakur joseph nathaniah um, asarela the sons of asaph were under the supervision Okay, you can underline that if you have a hard copy of the Bible. They were under the supervision of Asaph, who prophesied, underline this, under the king's supervision. As for Jeruthun, from his sons, Gedaliah, Zeri, Jeshahiah, Shemai, Hashabiah, and Mattathiah, six in all, under the supervision of their father, Jeruthun. Who prophesied using the harp in thanksgiving, in thanking and praising the Lord. And and Heman and his sons. Verse 5. All these were sons of Heman, the king's seer, 
they were given him through the promises of God to exalt him. God gave He-Man 14 sons and three daughters. Verse 6, this is important, guys. All these men were under the supervision of their fathers for the music of the temple of the Lord, with cymbals and lyres and harps, for the ministry at the house of God. Asaph, Jeduthun, and Heman were under the supervision of the king. Okay, uh, Christopher has a question here. Please expand with examples on being over familiar with God. Um, examples. <laughs> uh, I can probably see about getting some right examples. Let me hopefully find um, that here. Give me a second, uh, Christopher. I'm just looking at this. Okay, uh, let's go to um, let's go to the previous chapter uh, in uh, First Chronicles 14. Okay, uh, First Chronicles 14, um, verse eight onwards. I just want to read the passage for us. So Christopher is asking a question, saying, "Please expand with examples on being over familiar with God." Um, but I'm using a different example, Christopher. So we hit First Chronicles 14, verse 8 onwards. It says, When the Philistines heard that David had been anointed king over all Israel, they went up in full force to search for him. But David heard about it and went out to meet them. Now the Philistines had come and raided the valley of Rephaim. So David inquired of God. Okay, uh, If you want to, you can underline that. David inquired of God. Shall I go and attack the Philistines? Will you hand them over to me? The Lord answered him, Go, I will hand them over to you. So David and his men went up to Baal uh, Perazim, and there he defeated them. He said, As waters break out, God has broken out against my enemies by my hand. So the place was called Baal Perazim. Verse 12. The Philistines had abandoned their gods there, and David gave orders to burn them in the fire. Verse 13. Once more the Philistines raided the valley. And so David inquired of God again, and God answered him, Do not go straight up, but circle around them and attack them in front of the balsam trees. As soon as you hear the sound of marching in the tops of the balsam trees, move out to battle, because that will mean God has gone out in front of you to strike the Philistine army. So uh, there is a lot of things that's happening in this passage. For me, what again stands out is the way David is handling, um, how he's responding, right? Um, so David has fought enough battles by now, uh, and God has been with him. And time and time again in the scriptures, we see that uh, David won this battle because the God was with him, right? God was with him. Um, and and his posture of heart is he inquires of God, right? He's asking, he's leaning us. Okay, Lord, tell me what to do. Tell me what to do. And the second time also he asks, he is not responding uh, or is taking matters into his own hands and saying, um, okay, you know what? Uh, last time I went into the battle, uh, you know, this is what God told me to do. Uh, and let me use that same strategy and uh, go and do the same thing my own way, thinking that God is okay with it. Uh, that is like acting uh, out of being uh, familiar, uh, right? That's one example. I hope you get it. So, say, uh, yeah, I see your hand being raised. Oh, I just wanted to add another example is that maybe when we started out with God, we were so fervent in his presence. We worshipped, you know, and then over the years we grew in Christ and um uh, we just approach God's presence as if, oh, it's something we already know as. It just becomes an everyday routine. Yeah. So I think that's an example of being yeah. over familiar with God, whereby we lose yeah. our reverence for his presence. Yeah, yeah thanks, Say. Thanks for sharing. And uh, Kennedy, yeah, please go ahead. Yeah, thank you. Like in the case, uh, let's just give an example. In the case of Moses, eh, you have been instructed the first thing to do. Then when he got familiar with that, 
you just track the route instead of talking to it. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for sharing that, Kennedy. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Christopher, I see your hand raised. Ah, uh, yes, Pastor. Um, uh, actually, uh, when I meant examples, um, I was I was actually looking at it. You know, maybe uh, examples of um, you know in in a, in a, in a current sort of situation. Uh, not that we want to be judgmental, but you know, more like you know, it it this could be you know construed as you know of being all familiar with God. Um, so it is more the, the current current sort of examples. And um, I guess one of the things, you know, not being part of, uh, uh, you know, a worship um, team or a worship ministry, uh, and just, you know, sometimes just, you know, when when singing, you know, in a, in a in a in a group, uh, it is a it is a it is that it is a feeling of, you know, a, a different kind of feeling, you know, and um, um, sometimes it it. Um, it, it it could it could not it may it may not be very um, uh, pleasing to God sometimes, um, and uh, I, I mean if there if there are any examples that come to mind in a, in a current situation maybe you could share that here. <laughs> so I can't pick one and say okay this is uh, because it can come in any shape or form, Christopher. And uh, one of the things, classic thing, is like what Sai uh, you know explained is that. Uh, you know, actually, Bobby Connor he says his best. He says we've become all too familiar with the God we hardly know. Because uh, <laughs> uh, I think, okay, you know, we, okay, like sometimes it might not be intentional. Like for example, um, let me just share from my uh, own experience. Uh, this is a, a bad example, okay, and I'm not very proud about it. Uh, but I'll share it anyway. Uh, so I have planned for a camp. Uh, in uh, youth camp in 2019 and uh, I remember that was my first year being as a youth pastor and I was so nervous and uh, afraid and I didn't know what to do and um, I remember asking you know just seeking him praying uh, you know I said okay Lord, what do you want me to uh, you know what the camp team to be uh, and what not and so long story short uh, you know the camp was awesome God moved in a beautiful way uh, in 2019 uh, Tarun, Tarun was there um, but then when I started planning for the next youth camp in 2020, uh, and there was this like, okay, you know, we, we tried this, uh, we did this, and I think we should just go ahead with a very similar kind of a theme uh, and whatnot. And so when I say that I'm not proud about me sharing this is I did not lean into asking God uh, about what he wanted to do for a new camp in the new year. Uh, instead. I was arrogant and thought, okay, I could lean on my own understanding because of my own experience uh, uh, was good. And I was arrogant enough to think, okay, I've been one year, <laughs> I've been a youth pastor for a year now, so I think I know what to do. And I didn't feel the need to inquire of God, like what David was constantly doing, uh, His that he constantly inquired of God. And that's a beautiful sign of humility is that we basically, we don't lose the wonder of who this God is. Um, yeah, I mean, if anybody else wants to uh, share, feel free to unmute and uh, share. Yeah. Okay. Can I? Yeah. Hello. Yes. Yeah, I think there's, there's a, a familiar saying that familiarity breeds contempt. So in many occasions, you tend to lean in your own understanding and you yeah. continue in the going to the humanity. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, Kennedy. Yeah, that's wonderful. Yeah, thank you. Um, Yes, Rupa, go ahead. Uh, once I was uh, invited to share in a women's retreat. So the word the Lord gave me was uh, remembers Lord's wife in the afternoon session. And uh, they were all, when I went there and shared in the morning worship afternoon, I saw they were all in a festive mood. And I was thinking in my human understanding, how can I share about Lord's, Lord's wife. So I, I had a ready-made uh, um, PPT on my laptop. I thought I would present that about the uh, virtues of a woman. That was the first time I was thinking in my understanding. I always was very careful.
to lean on to god and faithful to mm. deliver what he wanted me to but yeah. but when i st- uh, open my computer it suddenly crashed mm. then the fear of the lord came into my heart and, and i was very sorry and i felt uh, i asked for god's forgiveness and continued with that uh, sermon okay. which god has already given me so i wanted just wanted to share thank you thanks rupa thank you for sharing your experience Um, anybody else uh, any thoughts well, that's a good question uh, christopher i think it's a much needed question uh it it's a question that keeps us on the right track uh there's a song by keith green um i like the bridge of it uh, oh lord you're beautiful uh, i think it says uh, the bridge says i want to take your word and shine it all around but first help me just to live it lord um and the words of the song has always ministered to me is while i can be very busy with doing god's work <laughs> ministry and what not uh, it's very easy for me uh, us to say me to say that i want to take your word and shine it all around lord but first help me just to live it and that's a posture of humility and and uh, like it says you know in first chronicles 25 as we've been reading is uh, submitting ourselves uh, under the lord's will let your will be done um right uh so yeah that's uh, to not have familiarity uh the opposite of that is to have a posture of humility um and you can see that uh in in the life of Jesus there's this beautiful book by Andrew Murray um Andrew Murray uh it's called it's called uh, humility lesson in humility but something to do with humility okay <laughs> and remember and there's a very uh, one interesting chapter i think chapter 3 or 4 it says uh humility in the life of jesus uh it's beautiful uh, it's it's a must read uh, i i would say um it, it's about how in everything that jesus did uh, you know time and time again in the gospel of john itself we see that he keeps saying i'm not here to uh, do my own thing or to say what i want to say or to do what i want to do or to go where i want to go everything that i do is because my father wants me to do it is his will it is his will it is his word it is his thing i am saying i'm doing what i see my father do uh you know so it's it's he lived in uh the last person on this whole planet to be familiar with god uh, should be jesus right it's like yeah he's my father okay i don't have to keep asking him uh, <laughs> uh you get what i'm saying it's but you see his posture and how he constantly uh you know submitted himself to the will of the father to the uh, you know to the end where in Luke 20 to 42 it says let not my will but yours be done uh, that's a posture of humility and not being over familiar so uh right and opposite of submission uh guys in point 3 that's the next thing we see right all these people uh you know the sons of asaph asaph himself and jerthan and heman uh they were all under the supervision of the king and the supervision means uh, they were under the submission okay they submitted themselves it's a sign of humility uh and humility is the world has portrayed it as weakness right uh, but it's not weak you have to be strong to be humble isn't it i uh, you have to be strong to be the first person in a relationship to go and say uh, sorry even if it is your not your fault you know uh if it is a if there is a huge wall that you want to jump across uh there are two of you you need to have a strong person to bend down and give them your back so you can stamp on their back and climb the wall and jump isn't it um and so you have to be strong to be humble um so humility is a sign of strength uh and you know that's in line with submissiveness so uh because bible is very clear uh, about the about pride and proud what god thinks about uh 
pride, a proud people, what he does to them. Uh, we've read we've read enough scriptures about it. You know it all. Uh, you know Proverbs chapter six itself is enough. Proverbs chapter six verse one to six. It says there are six things that the Lord hates, and the seven things in total that He detests. The first in the list is <laughs> a, a proud look. Uh, right, James chapter four says He resists the proud. Uh, the last thing that we need as worshipers, as worship ministers, is that God resisting our worship like he resisted Cain's. Uh, you know, it, it's not a pleasant scene, isn't it? That he's saying, okay, yeah, I don't want you. I, that I don't care how good you sing. I don't care how, nice, how, how skilled you are at your instrument. Uh, I don't care how well you look, how well you dress, uh, yada, yada, yada. I don't care. Uh, but if there's pride in your heart, I don't need your worship. Uh, that's the last thing that you and I as worshipers uh, need God to do, right? Um, so three things, uh, first three things we see that they were set apart uh, to ministry. That means to serve, uh, to serve. And then three, three is they were under this uh, supervision. Uh, in our worship ministry, you know, we, I'm under the supervision of my senior pastor, Pastor Ashish Raichur. Uh, you know, I have to work with him to understand his vision, his heart for the church, uh, and then take the worship ministry in that direction. Just because I'm the worship pastor, I was like, yeah, I'm the worship pastor. I will do whatever I want to do. Uh, you know, this is the <laughs> this is the vision of APC. I'm going to go in this direction because this is what uh, I believe and whatnot. No, I can't do that, right? Um, I'm under the supervision uh, of my senior pastor. And I have to lean into him to see, okay, what is his heart? What is his vision uh, for the church and for the city and for the nation and, and the nations? Uh, right? You see what I did there? Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, so they were all under the supervision of the king. Um, and the next thing we see in verse 7, okay, First Chronicles chapter 25, verse 7, it says, along with their relatives, all of them trained and skilled in music for the lord all of them were trained and skilled in music for the lord david didn't just didn't put up a board saying okay everybody who wants to be in the worship team please come on on board uh no um i'm sure they've had their way of auditioning people uh you know like we like we do uh at apc and in most churches they have an audition to filter out uh, I'm not going to put a billboard and say, okay, everybody who can sing, uh, just come. We're going. There's a process, there's a procedure, uh, which is an important thing, uh, part. So everybody were trained and skilled um, in music uh, for the Lord. And finally, we see um, the number 288, young and old alike, teacher as well as student, cast lots. For their duties, young and old alike, um, multi generational uh, worship team was David's worship team. Uh, we in, in in the next chapter or, or chapter after we learn a little bit about the difference between a band and a local church worship ministry. Okay, uh, but just one point, one feather from that chapter is um, a band is all uh, exclusive uh, right uh, exclusive uh, it's like uh, it's just us it could be a girl band it could just be a boy band it could just be a youth band and us four and no more uh, and whatnot but worship uh, ministry of a church is not like that it's open to every age um, you know every generation uh, that wants to serve in the worship ministry. And that we see that happening here in David's worship team. All right, so these are the five simple uh, lessons that we can learn from how David uh, set up his worship team. He set them apart. Uh, teach your worship teams about the seriousness of living a holy life and not to compromise with living a holy life. Uh, I would rather have uh, uh, a, a person's heart whom I can mold uh, and and train them and and in in you know um, in in music and in singing rather than have someone who's living a an immoral unholy life, uh, you know as serving because I wouldn't want that. So seriousness of set apart because our God is holy, and it's all about serving one another. 
uh, just because you're part of a worship team doesn't make you entitled uh, say you know i want others to serve me uh, when i get to the stage the water bottle should already be there why is it not here and all you know um, we are there to serve you are not entitled to be served, right? So that's a very good reminder. Uh, under the submission, uh, humility, uh, submission of the senior pastor uh, is key. And all of them were trained and skilled, right? Uh, make sure your, your team members are trained and skilled. Emphasize on that. Um, and then seek to learn and teach, young and old. Uh, there's humility written all, all across all these five points, people. So you need to be humble to go to someone and say, teach me. Right? That's why I'm humble that you guys are all here to hear me teach. Uh, it's a sign of, it's a beautiful posture of humility to go to someone and say, it's like, hey, I don't know this. Can you teach me? Um, right? So uh, instill that in your teams, as uh, it's mentioned in David's worship team. And so... Um, uh, and I hope this helps. Okay, so that's the end of this section. That's the end of section one, chapter one. Uh, we've covered from the life of Abraham to Moses' tabernacle, David's tabernacle. Um, and here we are, finally come to an end. Okay, so I hope um, you've learned um, something. I hope you are learning something. Please go back home and meditate on the scriptures, uh, whichever God puts on your heart. Right, I'll see you all again next week. Thanks, guys. Take care. Have a great week ahead. Thank you, Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you.